Hello folks. So I still get a lot of questions on the astrophotography rigs I use and how much each one costs. So I thought I'd break it down for people in detail. I'll just give you a high level of each scope first and then I'll go into detail on each one. But this is my Celestron Rasa telescope and let me tell you I didn't expect to love this scope as much as I did. Um, this is uh, it's a great telescope. It's, I think, a serious telescope. You can do amazing astrophotography with it. But um, I also think it's a great telescope even for beginners. And um, this is a, it's built as a, a high speed telescope. It runs at um, a focal ratio of f2, which is many times faster than a refractor. Now, that might not be all it's cracked up to be. I'll tell you why in a moment. But um, the reason I really like this is I was nervous about that kind of speed and I heard, well, it's hard to adjust the focus at that speed. And that turned out to be completely untrue. You know what? You have to be careful about people when they say, I heard this or I heard that. Most of the time they're just telling you their opinion of things and they don't really have any hands-on experience and they didn't really hear it. Sometimes people knock what they don't actually own. So. Uh, if, if you want opinions on something, I would make sure ask someone who actually owns the equipment you're interested in buying. So, if you want to buy a Celestron Rasa telescope, ask me. I'm the one. And what I really like about this scope, number one, is the focus is so easy to set. And it holds all night. I've gone many nights where I didn't have to adjust the focus at all. And what really surprised me about this telescope is how clean the images are. I swear I have dust in my imaging train, but you would never know it when you see the final exposures. It's amazing. Um, the only reason I capture flats really is just to fix the little bit of vignetting I have around the edges of the picture. So uh, that being said, I, I think it makes it a great scope for beginners. Easy to focus, the focus holds, clean images, but the speed is what surprised me. I thought I was getting a really fast scope at f2 but that's there's drawbacks to that because now i live in a very light polluted area and to take advantage of the the speed of f2 you really need to, to have at least for narrow band you need to have filters at least uh, with a, a wider band pass in the 10 nm or higher and uh, and that's what I do, but when you have a, such a wide band pass, you're, you're letting in extra light pollution, and I think that does hurt the image some. So I'm kind of losing a little bit there. And plus, when I'm letting in more light pollution, I run the risk of becoming overexposed more quickly. My pictures could become whitewashed if I go too long, so I have to keep the exposures shorter than I would with a refractor. So. And if you keep the exposures shorter, then you're going to need more exposures to make it to 5 hours or to 10 hours. And, and, and what happens when you have more exposures? You have more settling time in between the exposures, more dithering. And so you're, with all that the time lost, you're kind of losing the advantage of the, the speed of F2. So, so because of my light pollution, I think I'm losing the, that kind of advantage. So F2 for me doesn't really mean a whole lot, but the clean images alone are why I really love this scope. Even when I'm doing broadband, I was surprised. Okay, so this is my Explorer Scientific Telescope. It has a focal length of 952, and this is an upgraded version of what I used to use. This one has a carbon fiber tube and better glass on the inside. And uh, I consider this my, my bread and butter scope. This is what put me on the map. Every magazine I've ever been in, two of my NASA astronomy pictures of the day were taken with an Explorer Scientific running at a 952 focal length. So I always said this will be a permanent fixture of, uh, of my deep space imaging. The only problem I have with this scope is that I've used it so exhaustively for the past three years, I've pretty much captured everything I ever wanted to capture at that focal length of 952. It's a great, it's a great focal length to run at. It's great for to get in close on nebulas and galaxies, 
But since I've done everything I feel that I've ever wanted, I'm going to have to to work a little harder to find more obscure objects to keep this telescope busy. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll figure that out, so no need to worry. But we're heading into galaxy season, so um, there's still a lot of galaxies I think I can find that I didn't capture yet. All right, now let me go into detail on some of this stuff. Now here's some pictures I captured with my Explorer Scientific Telescope. But I'll start from the ground up with this setup, beginning with the dolly wheels. It's hard to believe, but this is the question I get the most. Where do you get these wheels from? Now I use these wheels on all of my setups to roll my equipment out of the garage, but I remove them before I actually do some imaging. This is my Celestron CGX mount. It's a bit worn, I've gotten my use out of it over the years, but it has a 55 pound payload capacity. Now I leave the covers off of the motors and that's because I adjust the screws once in a while to fine tune tracking, but it's not a good idea to leave the covers off because dirt could get in there. Now we're looking at my main telescope here. This is the Explorer Scientific Carbon Fiber model. And the one I used before, I'll also list the price here. Both versions of this telescope will give you great results. And this is the Pole Master. This is what I use to get a quick and easy polar alignment. This is my Moonlight Focuser. I have it set to automatically readjust the focus every hour for this telescope. This is my Hotec Field Flattener. I tore apart the self-centering mechanism so I could use it as a threaded flattener instead. This is a ZWO filter wheel that can hold eight filters. And a full set of Optolong filters could cost you $665. This is a ZWO astronomy camera that I captured deep space images with. Now you might have seen some cables dangling around and that's because of my poor cable management decision. I wrapped up all of my cables in one nice hose and guess what? Since I've done this, two of my cables have died on me. So that was a bad decision to wrap up all of my cables at once. I'm going to have to come up with a different strategy for that. This is my Lodestar X2 guide camera. I paid way too much money for this. You can get by with a much less expensive planetary camera. And this is the Orion ST80 guide telescope, which they don't actually make anymore, but I think you can get something similar with an Orion CT80. Now here's some pictures I captured with my Celestron Rasa 8-inch telescope. Now here's the wheels again, we already talked about those. Now for this setup I'm using a Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount and it has a 44 pound payload capacity. The mount tracks great, but I am disappointed with how cumbersome doing polar alignment is with this mount and the clutch strips easily, so you do need to walk on eggshells when you're doing polar alignment. And this is the Celestron Rasa 8 inch telescope. This is the Celestron focus motor. I never did set it up for autofocus. I just use the Celestron software to focus in and out and it usually holds for so long I don't need to keep running an automatic focus routine. And the camera is a ZWO ASI 533MC camera. It's unplugged right now because I was trying it on a different setup. And this is my dew heater control box. Uh, the tape job's a bit sloppy, but it controls my dew heater strips to keep dew off my glass. I use the same one on my other setup too. This is a ZWO guide telescope. And I use the ZWO ASI 224MC planetary camera as a guide camera. Well, that's the gist of my deep sky imaging. If I forgot anything, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Hello folks, so I still get a lot of Hello folks, so I still get a lot of questions on the deep space rigs I use to capture deep space objects. Mother Hello folks, so I still get a lot of ask yeah. Hello folks, so I still get a lot of questions on the deep space astrophotography. <laughs> I'm never going to get this. Deep space rigs I use to capture objects. Nope. And let you know how much each part... 
after all this time, I have trouble.